purpose of this meeting is just to 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 give you some background information about what's going on in the annual meeting. Maybe you want to discuss with colleagues. Maybe you want to prepare something in having in mind of uh, that. And and I would like to mention some background information which are not in the written in the papers, or maybe you you haven't have time to read the papers until yet. So uh, feel free to to ask anything you want to know. I would uh, like to walk through the agenda and 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 give some of the background. So let me start uh, uh, my sh start sharing my screen. Okay. Um, Now that's the agenda, a little bit optimized for this slide, but it's the same. The same you see on the on the home page. Now it's a little bit better. Um, well, the first two is just uh, yeah, daily business. I don't think there's anything uh, to add about the ICMCI strategy. Uh, we will, that's the beginning and that's the, the, the main purpose of the whole meeting is what do our activities from ICMCI side um, based on all the strategic discussions we had in the board and with in, in, in the previous uh, annual meetings, how do they reflect to the work of the IMCs? And that's, that's, um, um, that's the main purpose of this annual meeting. Of course, along with some uh, bylaw discussion and and all the the formal stuff that will take place on the second day. On the first day, uh, it's 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 a pretty much open discussion about uh, how do our activities as ICMCI reflect to IMCs? What could we uh, improve and and what does it mean for the IMCs? Um, I will point out some of the main topics that um, have been driving us for the for the last year, and that is to as we always say, to become a more and more mature organization. And this is becoming more and more important. Um, this uh, in, in terms of um, to be open to other stakeholders, to uh, be open um, uh, or, or, or to, to, to make the CMC designation more and more sustainable and more and more important on the, on the, on the market. Uh, our collaboration with other global stakeholders like the UNIDA project um, or uh, uh, other op uh, other collaborations on global level. And also um, we want to um, introduce um, our new, uh, a new project that is uh, about establishing a legal entity in the US. Um, this will be presented in detail on the second day but this uh, legal aid entity, we call it, uh, today we call it uh, ICMCI Services Incorporated. That will allow us to be more active uh, in approaching uh, stakeholders, potential uh, members, uh, consultants, together with IMCs or in countries where we are not present with uh, our own, I with, uh, with, with IMCs, but with uh, the GI. And uh, the main background is to be able to uh, charge money. <laughs> that's uh, that's one of the biggest challenges we have because as a as a Swift entity, we we have the we have big issues uh, in 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 receiving micropayments for uh, attending uh, trainings or workshops or whatever. And um, these uh, services incorporated will allow us to be more active in that uh, in that respect together with uh, the IMCs depending on the the situation the specific situation in the specific countries where we have a different level of IMCs who, 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 who want to deliver on their own this is not what we want to um, compete but it's for for us as ICMCI to be more active in approaching potential and uh, this is this will be introduced in this um, topic ICMCI strategy, and then we will switch to another um, topic, not in detail, 
Um, it's about governance recommendations and implementation um, and the risk management system. Actually, these are two different topics, but the governance recommendations implementation is, uh, we had this discussion for the last annual meetings and now um, Nick has prepared uh, a whole bunch of bylaws changes. He will walk through all these bylaws changes uh, and on the second day, but he will give an overview about that. And um, of course, what we started uh, in our last board meeting to uh, implement a risk management system, because we think we are still very small and we, we, we don't have very high risks, but if we start only with the risk management system after having high risks, it's it might be too late. So this is, uh, we think it's a good point to start with the risk management system and risk, uh, Nick will introduce that risk management system and also the, the process of maintaining the risk management. It's not just to set up what are our risks today because it, they are changing and, and we need to be aware that new risk may uh, come up or existing risk uh, need to be amended. Um, as Nick is here and he needs to leave, maybe you want, do you want to add something to that? Uh, not necessarily to add, Robert, but just a, a point. Uh, when I got uh, Dwight's final presentation, I actually started to add the few slides to it that I was going to present for the risk management. Mm -hmm. uh, just need to know, would you be happy for me to do it that way, Rima, or would it be easier and better if, if the two presentations were kept separate? I think we, we talked of this. It's better to just keep separate so that people first understand better what it's all about, and then you translate that into resolutions somehow. I don't know okay. if I'm making sense. Okay, then I'll do that for the day one session, and I'll also do the same for the day two session, where it's the secretary's report and um, the governance recommendations. So I'll keep all the presentations separate then. Okay. Yes, uh, as Dwight will not be able to join us, that is a presentation, uh, it's done by uh, via video. Correct. The presentation is actually a presentation that Nick would be presenting on behalf of Dwight. However, the NSPC report, which is the GNC now, that yes. would be in video. Ah, so that would be in video. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. two separate Very things. Good. The implementation of the task force recommendations is one part because that is translated into actions, amendments on the bylaws, resolutions, and what have you. While the report from GNC is an update on what took place during the year. Okay. Okay. Um, then we have um, a short time slot to introduce our new marketing uh, board director, Alexandra. She's here. I don't see her on the screen, but I, I, I saw you <laughs> before that. So I, I don't think I kicked you out. Um, and because marketing, she's followed, uh, Alexandra, she's followed uh, Yehona. Yehona uh, quit. Um, as a board director uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we decided uh, to ask Alexandra if she could follow up and she's introducing herself. And as we do not have any elections this year, we have the next elections in the in, in next year. Um, we uh, She's joining the board until next year and then she needs to be elected. That's, that's why we introduce her in that way. And um, yes, um, Alexander, do you want to add something? Well, I just want to say that uh, it's honest for me to be the part of this board, and uh, I'm happy to work with all of uh, with all of uh, colleagues. Um, well, as we see, we have a strategy, and we will discuss about that. And uh, over that strategy, we need for me to make. Maybe not so fast, but for some time, communication <clears throat> strategy, market strategy for all stakeholders that we have. We have a lot of stakeholders, not just internal, but external too. 
and uh, need to position our profession as one of the leading for growing uh, in the markets, in the whole world. And I will uh, give the best I have and I know <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to support our, our and my organization because I really support that especially ethics it's something that i need that i think we are different than big force or other consultants especially with something we have um, as ethics and the uh, cmc as qualification that we have so yes. that's for start okay okay thank you um and then we want to have a, a short time slot to present the future leaders community uh, I think you're all aware of the Future Leaders Initiative that uh, has been started by Gagana uh, more or less one or two years ago. Um, and the word has changed to community now because our new community policy allows us to establish um, a community or any, uh, any, any group of people who have uh, some, some special uh, interest or common interest to a sp specific topic. And um, this future leaders um, group uh, wants to become a community and they want to present themselves and ask as many IMCs as possible to support this initiative. Uh, and then we have the uh, introduction of the uh, round table. We have four round tables and every uh, discussion will take um, 40 minutes and has some five minutes to present the findings out of the discussion. And we will have a three, uh, no, we have four sessions. So everybody would be able to, uh, to join each table and to discuss around those four topics. First is how can IMCs deal with, the, with ethics and how ICMCI can support. I think that is, um, it is a topic that is well. It's 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 very important because the discussion about management consulting services and the the behavior, especially of the we call them industry, the big four, or what's the difference between small consulting firms and or individual management consultants and those in global uh, big firms? What 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 how could we present ourselves better we do have um a couple of examples in the in the last year there where we supported the imcs with uh, demonstrating our role in um in uh, the iso committee and establishing the iso standard because the iso standard is a very important tool to demonstrate that our profession is a profession that has standards uh, which are not laws but they there are standards and they address specifically uh, ethical behavior but not only ethical behavior and this should be discussed in this table number one and I think that is a very important discussion in both directions um, first to demonstrate to the IMCs or to show the IMCs there are some tools, um, the CMC designation, of course, the standard I also already mentioned, but also the, the Constantinos Award to demonstrate to different stakeholders that we deliver quality. Uh, but on the other side, we as ICMCI, from ICMCI perspective, want to learn more about how could we specifically support because we, we cannot approach national stakeholders like uh, uh, the, the parliament or regulatory organizations that needs to be done on national level. But maybe we could add more tools to, to enable the, uh, the IMCs to do that more efficient and, and use actually this chance now because there are very big discussions going on in different countries and to use this chance to demonstrate how important the IMC is and how how what what the role of the IMC could be in future? Um, the table number two is about the CMC designation. How could we uh, adapt this, the the path to CMC in terms of 
having it easier to understand for um, um, an, 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 a consultant who is deciding, should I take all the way to the CMC designation or could we split it up to smaller bunches um, to make it more easy to accept, okay, I will have the first or the second um, level. And at the end of the of the trip, there is uh, the CMC designation, but it, there is something in between. And it might be easier to understand why should I invest uh, money and time to have um, a, a label that is demonstrating outside that I do deliver management consulting in this, on, this, on a specific level. It's not that we want um, to harm the CMC, we want to strengthen the CMC. This should protect the CMC. And that brings in the discussion uh, because we are in, in our UNIDA project, we need uh, a, a level of uh, ICMCI and knowledge designation. Uh, for the consultants, we want to educate in this uh, project um, that demonstrate they are recognized as a management consulting, but not to the full CMC extent. Uh, but they can build on that. And if they want to uh, become a full CMC, they have a certain level where they can start from. And that is um, what we want to discuss with the IMCs because it, for the IMCs, it might have an impact that they need to adapt existing training programs or existing certification schemes. And uh, how, yes, how, how they deal with that. And then the other um, input to that is the situation with the chartered management consultant in England. Uh, no, it's not England, it's UK, is it? It's, I always mix it up, sorry, but for all Commonwealth countries. And uh, because the chartered management consultant actually it's more or less the same. <laughs> uh, and now we have, I think a very good discussion with uh, IMC UK to uh, find a solution. How could we recognize on reciprocity our, uh, our designations and give the consultants a, a quick way um, and in terms of money, but also in terms of time, a quite cheap way to uh, have an extra designation, which is on more or less the same level. It's not the same. Uh, specifically because they need to be member in an IMC and they need to acknowledge to the CMC code of ethics and but the rest is from the from the educational uh, uh, requirements it's it's more or less the same and that also uh, reflects to the situation that uh, a couple or many uh, uh, academic training uh, or education programs uh, an MBA in management consulting and we need to accept that um, they come in with a specific uh, a level of academic education. They do not, usually they do not have um, uh, sufficient practical experience, but um, how do we deal with that? And how could we make it easier for people who have just left the university and give them an idea how could they uh, achieve the CMC designation? Um, and the third level is about how consultants could benefit from our international relations um, that ICMCI is providing to the IMCs. Um, that includes the hubs, because we think uh, in many situations and management consultant might be interesting, interested to be connected international, but not connected to the whole world. Uh, so if there is a, in a management consultant in, 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 in Europe or specifically now in, uh, in Ireland, for example, uh, they want to be connected to Europe. They don't need to be connected to the African or the Americas or to, to the Asian world. That might be follow up in a, in a later stage. But, and, and that is something that is additional benefit for the IMCs to convince as many consultants as possible, become a member of our IMC we provide the CMC designation and we give you international connections to um, other countries. And uh, that also reflects to the new hub policy, which make the hubs much more agile and much more 
reflecting on the regional needs and they are different. The, the needs for the hubs are different in the Americas, in Europe, uh, in the Asia and, and Africa. And the new hub policy allows the hubs to, to adapt and to be much more flexible in, in, in approaching stakeholders on regional level. So that's the table number three. And uh, the fourth is membership growth and development. Of course, I think that that is a, a topic we discuss more or less in, in every annual meeting, but um, it, that only demonstrates how important this topic is and how important it is to uh, have um, to support from ICMCI side the growth and the development and the, our membership committee, which is no longer called membership committee, but it's called membership development uh, committee. Um, and they, they um, have worked out uh, a special program for that and they want to discuss it with the IMC. So all you see on these four tables is, it is not a one direction presentation, it is an interactive discussions, ICMC and uh, IMCs. It doesn't mean that what we have developed is, uh, is ready in terms of cannot be adapted to the IMC's needs, but all we do, if there is no benefit for the IMC's, we need to stop it. If the IMC said, no, we are not interested in that, uh, we need to, to stop because we have very limited resources and if we invest our resources in something that is not adapted by the IMC's, um, there is no need for it. it it's just uh, costing actually money and time. So these are the four round tables. Um, we could have five or six or seven, but we don't have time uh, for more. So this is why we, we, we limited it to these four uh, round tables. If you have any questions to them now, if you want to add something, uh, please. Can I, can I just uh, say something? Um, yes. Uh, it's Sue here. Um, some of, uh, very unfortunately, I can't be at the conference. Um, but um, obviously, um, I work quite closely with Nick, so um, that that's good. Um, I'm just very interested because I'm working on the um, ISO 17011 audit. Um, Nick is due to do the uh, internal audit for me after the conference. Um, some of the key areas which I'm interested in um, are risk management, um, the bylaws. Um, so we will need to update those before the external audit, which I anticipate will be um, next year now. Um, so those are the key things. The governance review as well. I've got a paper from 2020. So again, I, I guess that will be updated. And that's all good in terms of IQA and its um, independence and impartiality. Um, so that's all great evidence for me. And the other um, area I'm interested in as well is the consultant's journey and path. Um, I'm quite passionate about that, especially in the UK, they'll know that. Um, and I am part of uh, looking at the chartered and how we demonstrate that uh, reciprocity. So um, those are all key areas of interest for me. So um, uh, yeah, that, that will be great that those things are covered at the conference and um, I can get some great updates for, um, uh, for the external audit, um, especially as I appear as a risk <laughs> uh, with, <laughs> with the audit. So thank you for that, Nick, <laughs> no pressure. So um, that, that's great, but thanks. I think the agenda looks, um, looks excellent. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Robert, I'm just curious, Lydia here, I'm just curious, will the delegates be assigned to specific tables or do they have an option? In other words, yeah. if we go in the breakout rooms, well, we are not going to go in breakout, we are going to breakout rooms in person, not by Zoom. Uh, is it already pre-selected or we can say I want table one, two, three or four? What is... Me? like we want to pre-select it uh, ah. to a certain extent because we want to avoid a situation where um, a group of imcs which is not mixed very well they what we call it they cook in their own soup it's uh, it we want to be open and we want to take we want to have this we want to have a good mixture in the in the, in the discussion groups okay um, got 
Yeah. But you of course, we cannot to... force anybody to to join yeah. in this group. If some, if they want to change, uh, they can, of course. But we would uh, appreciate very much if this goes in that direction. Okay. Sure. Got it. Thank you. Yes, Brendan, uh, please. Uh, I yes. just want to add that each table will discuss each subject. So even if if everyone decides to sit wherever they want and we weren't able to control that, like Robert said, we will listen to them anyway. So they will have their input uh, delivered regardless of where they're sitting. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, that's that, what you just said then, Rima, is quite different to the way it was just listed. So yeah, anyway, that was in my mind. Uh, look, I just wanted to ask and be absolutely sure there's no way to join this um, annual meeting virtually, is there? That is, Sorry, it is no. such a, it's such a shame, and but I do understand, like, because you've got to sort of craft the event to suit um, an in-person focus, and that makes it very difficult. Hybrid is really challenging. So I do accept it, but it's disappointing. Um, the papers you mentioned, because I'm not, um, I, I used to get emails from you directly I don't seem to anymore I'm not sure what what happened there uh, so I'm now a little bit more susceptible to how good the passing on of information is so I'm still on the board of IMC in Australia but Brendan the... um, each year we send out a membership uh, survey to all the IMCs and mm -hmm. they provide us with all the contacts that should be included right. on the mailing lists so um, uh, we have the contacts from IMC Australia. That's number one. Number yep. two, you used to get all the emails as well because you were on the committee. And, yeah. and then you're not. So um, anyway, you can be added on the mailing list and Khuzayma can hear us and she will add you. Okay? okay. We'll make sure that you're still there. And I know That's that you have more than one email, so we'll make sure both are included. Thank you. Yeah, no, just, just the... Um... Just the personalised one would be fine. That way there's no technical issues arising. Now, that's fine. And um, uh, probably not necessarily for right now, but uh, I would like to have an appropriate, robust discussion about the difference between a training pathway towards CMC and certification assessment. Uh, there is much confusion going on uh, Robert, you did a beautiful slide about a training pathway, but that has created enormous confusion <laughs> about, about then does that mean that achieving each of those steps are mandatory on the way to getting CMC? So I I feel that this is a, uh, I, I have a background in competence assessment. Many people don't, so they don't necessarily interpret it properly. Uh, and it's uh, yeah, there are there are many difficult discussions going on, and I'm not winning. <laughs> and so, <laughs> need your help. I need your help because we we may end up in a situation where people think you've got to go and do training with no competence assessment, and that'll be the big tick to get CMC. And that's not appropriate from my point of view. Uh, you should not have to do any training. And yet you should still be able to apply for CMC and be assessed uh, as possibly competent if you are an experienced management consultant. So there are different pathways to CMC. One is just experience. They've never heard of IMCs before. They've never heard of ICMCI. But now they have heard of it. Oh, yeah, I've been doing that my whole career. Can I be assessed? Yes, of course you can. Uh, they may have a few gaps because they don't know all the detail. Uh, but related to that is the latest version of the um, CMC competence standards has this inference that you must that you've got to have done the training, and I I don't believe you should have had to have done the checklist training to be eligible for CMC certification. So I just I just think that needs unpacking. I don't want to go into any more detail tonight, but uh, it's a really important topic. Yes, and uh, and sorry for the confusion. It was meant in the other way. I, I wanted to uh, demonstrate 
what do we need to discuss about and not this is the the outcome of that discussion yeah. and the, the the details they have they are worked out by the PSC they do the details and they are doing how do we deal with the reciprocity and how do we accept technically uh other educations and 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 all I wanted to demonstrate is that there is some sort of like the the ECDS points in the in on in on academic uh, level, there is it's more or less the same approach, and um, the PSC will uh, present it in in not the I don't think it's 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 going to be the final document, but they will present it in the second day because they they have a presentation of uh, uh, they present their report, mm -hmm. and of course it's it's complex. It sounds very easy. And uh, um, on strategic level, it's it's clear, but on technical level, it's not. And it's we as ICMC, we actually are looking for certification. In in a real in a in an ideal world, it should be the same approach for the IMCs because if they certify, they shouldn't train. But uh, in, in in practical life, um, you 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 cannot separate that because. Training is actually what the IMCs provide, and they also do the certification if there are um, 17 or 24 uh, recognized, or they, if they have the 17 or uh, 1724 certification, uh, they need to dis distinguish. And this is why we do it. Um, um, but they can it 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 can be the same body, but it needs there needs to be a very clear border between training and, and certification. Sure, certainly. Uh, but of course, uh, using IMC Australia as the example, we're accredited uh, by ICMCI to deliver the CMC certification uh, accreditation, um, CMC certification, uh, and we have uh, individuals who are competent to do those assessments, um, but we don't <laughs> IMC Australia doesn't need to be 17024 to do those assessments. No, but no. if they want to demonstrate that this is an ISO uh, knowledge certification, um, yeah. it gives a little bit more value. Um, I understand. It gives more, I, more value. Yeah, That's, so that I think, um, and look, what I'm aware of is that Australia uh, has been for d many decades very competence focused, whereas, for instance, the US has. Um, been more of a an exam focus. There's just a quite just by example quite a different view there. Um, but uh, we're very comfortable with competence assessment in in Australia. Uh, but but clearly there's different you know ways yeah. to prepare and, to be assessed. That's all I'm make, making the point about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But mm. and 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 I do know because I edit training delivered by IMC, but it could be developed on ICMCI level. Because it could be something that uh, is developed on ICMCI level and shared with all IMCs, because they it's not necessarily uh, that they need to develop their every IMCs need needs to develop their own trainings if it's actually the same and especially for international consulting projects, for example, it could be something that is developed by uh, ICMCI and it could be even delivered by ICMCI. But okay. Don't let us let us avoid to to dive too deep into because that's uh, it's an ongoing discussion. Sure. Um, anything else from your side? Because the rest of the day is uh, those four round table discussion. It will take us uh, um, up to the afternoon, and then we have an update from the Asia Pacific Hub from Lydia. We have an update from IMC Korea and the Eurohub, uh, so that sums up uh, the day. And and uh, um, I think it's it's a, it's a good base to to uh, go to the gala dinner and and discuss uh, what we uh, have. It no, it's no, um, welcome reception. The welcome reception, yes. Um, to go to the welcome uh, reception and discuss what uh, has been discussed the whole day, and that's one of uh, that's another reason why we decided not to have it uh, virtual because yeah. 
the virtual is just it's it's only a part of it um and mm -hmm. it it wasn't a decision we took too easy we had very intensive discussion about that but at the end of the day we needed to decide and it, many pros it many cons yeah. sense. it does it really does uh just though um just like uh, Sue expressed, I'm, I'm incredibly interested in the papers and the presentations. Uh, is something like that going to be available for a non-participant? Um, if I may answer on behalf of Robert, for the annual meeting, all papers are already out. Presentations will be added uh, after the event. A full summary report will be sent to all IMCs on the findings and and what happened uh, during the annual meeting. As for the conference, we yet need to decide what goes out to the public, what doesn't, because by the end of the day, people are paying to attend. So that's another conversation and another subject. But for the annual meeting, yes, everything will be shared and um, your delegates already have the contacts. So if you want to ask them for oh. the details on the access and everything, you can do that. Thank you. I, I'm I'm much more interested in the annual meeting because I just happen to re really be interested in the governance and administration of our profession. And uh, that's where my main interest is. Yeah. Well, we will have uh, ongoing discussions after the annual meeting uh, based on the outcome, I'm sure. And, and most probably we will have uh, an update session like this after the annual meeting, especially for those who were not being able to, to attend and find some sort of presentation of the presentations or whatever and and presentations of the outcome of the discussion and um because for for this day it's it's not a formal problem if we discuss it after the meeting uh, again with, with with people who were not been able to to attend for the second day for the formal uh, resolutions uh, there's nothing to discuss because once the resolution is taken it's, it doesn't make sense to discuss it again it's just a to present what has been decided. Certainly. Let me have a quick look on the day number two, uh, which is, as I, read, uh, as I said already, um, it's it's the day of the formal uh, things, formal stuff. This is why it only uh, takes half the day. It's not the full day. And I think uh, you all know uh, how, this, uh, how these things go on. It's the report. Uh, it's accepting the report, the presentation of what has been done by the board and the, the report from the secretary to include the governance recommendations and the bylaws. This is what Nick mentioned before. He walks through, I think it's about 30, resol no, it's 15, resol 11 resolutions, I guess. Yes, it's 11 resolutions, but they, are, they cover something like 30 amendments in the bylaws which are more or less um, wording or editing changes of names, names of the committees. We will have a discussion if we want to have the resolutions in a bunch for the bylaws uh, uh, recommendations, or if we want to have them resolution by resolution. The learnings from the last annual meetings were that some of the members want to have a, the resolution taken by resolution. And some of the but it's it's much more easy uh, to have it uh, in a bunch. So uh, let's see what the outcome will be. We want to be as open and transparent. We don't want to hide anything or whatever. Um, uh, but that uh, we will see how the, how this is going to work out. And also the reports from the committees that will include um, the committees uh, and the task forces, uh, which are listed here. And um, yeah, that will include the, as I mentioned already, the entity in Delaware, uh, the ICMCI services incorporated, which be, it, it, uh, Ruggiero will present the details, the business case, what does it mean uh, for us in terms of money? What is our risk? How much does it cost, uh, and what's what's the benefit? Um, I think it's it's more or less uh, it is a very easy <laughs> decision to take from our perspective, but uh, I think it should be discussed uh, in the annual meeting. It's not something that we need a resolution on because the board is 
uh, is empowered to to decide it on themselves, but it's it 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 might have an impact to all the IMCs, and and we we want to make sure that everybody knows about this project, and we want to make sure that any, everybody could potentially, if they want to, benefit from that. And then the same to the other reports, the budget. Um, yes, and then resolution and introduction of the votings and governance and nominations report. We don't have uh, election this year, so this will be quite short, but it has to be on the agenda and this is why it's on the agenda. So that's the second day. If you have any questions on that. Uh, very quickly, Robert. Um... Just remind me, I, I know our delegate from IMC Australia can't make it. He, he's going to be at another conference delivering a presentation. Um, just remind me, is, is an IMC able to have a proxy vote on the resolutions? I can answer that question, Randy. Uh, Brendan. Uh, Mike, Michael McLean who is the delegate, he's given me the proxy. Thank ah, you. Thank right. you. Fantastic. Thank you for asking that. He, he, he right. responded. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So you do not expect any one from IMC Australia to be in Jordan, right? This time? No. Uh, huh? Unfortunately. Oh, unfortunately. Right. right. Okay. Maybe next oh, oh, time. Sorry. Sorry. Um, Alan Blackman uh, is not on our board, but he, he is a board member of ICMCI and he's based in Australia. I'm not sure if Alan is going to the... He's not attending. He no. also couldn't make it. Yeah. 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 It's a long, long way away from Australia. And <laughs> it's also... It's also, a long, also, way. It's also a, a long way for me. I have to sit uh, in Istanbul to wait for the change the flights. <laughs> But yeah. Well, Brendan, if, if you want people to come to Australia when you host the events, then you should also go everywhere else when they host the <laughs> I, events. So, I understand. I've, I've never yeah. actually been to Australia, so it'd be it'd be a great thing for me to do. But, um, but I just wanted to say, too, it's a very, in Australia in October is an exceptionally busy time for conferences. But anyway, it's it's there's a lot going on. But look, no excuses. We, we can't make it, unfortunately. We'd love to be there. I would love to be there. Mm. Okay. Any other questions? Rima, did I forget something? Good. Only to tell everyone who's actually coming to um, enjoy themselves the most. And, and it would be lovely to see everyone after all this time. So we'll just have fun. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Yeah, Lydia? Maybe, maybe just uh, one question of curiosity. You don't mm -hmm. have to give me the answer now because <laughs> it's not to be said uh, during the annual meeting. It's the announcement of the 2024 events. <laughs> this for the next annual conference, place, venue yes. will be announced? Yeah. Wow, wonderful. Because I always need to prepare well in advance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Okay. So this time we that's that's one of the main reasons why we decided to make it in Jordan, because ah. we decided quite late to have a, a face to face meeting, and um, this is why we said, okay, let's do it in Jordan this year, and and we 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 have all the the background information, and we can react quite quick but next year is going to be uh, another country yeah Let, that's yeah. what i mean it will be announced uh who is the hosting country right which, which yeah that's Switzerland. the closing that's the closing it that's will closing. be announced yes, yes, yes. at one o'clock p.m yes. yes i look forward to that <laughs> good <laughs> all right we are done right yes we're yes. done thank you thank okay. you for joining and yeah. see you Jordan. See you soon. See you. Yeah. Bye.